what's up guys welcome to my channel if you are new yet my name is divine i'm a musical five minominak drummer and a keyboardist i have been for many many years i started making these videos as a space for music lovers like myself to check out our favorite artists and break down some of our findings that make them so so fantastic make sure you follow us on instagram at the perseverance reaction in order to recommend the favorite singers for us to react to What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today guys, we're back here to new video guys. I'm really excited. I'm going to check out some certain videos for you guys. I made the dad answer, what did Jesus mean seeing I and my father are one? Hmm. This is a very important topic and I know a lot of Muslims don't accept this. So I would like to check this out. This was recommended by a follower of mine. Um, we chatted so she recommended this video itself to me to check out and i know you guys we want to see my honest opinion about this video in particular you know how it is guys we'll talk less very long yet more let's get into this video uh, let me present myself as a pastor Arne Kappelgaard and i'm Thank you, Paul, for the fair way that you try to open the discussion. Although I could, I would like to have uh, heard you understand the context in so many of these places. I will not go into many details, just one. Have you not heard this context of the word, I and the Father is one, that Jesus called and uh, talk to the Jews, try to explain them step by step, slowly, what he is trying to tell them. Because it was so, just as hard for Jews to understand that what he was trying to tell about himself as it is for you. Because God is one. It took his disciples two and a half years to understand that at the same time he could say I am both I am also God although I am a man he was human yes and God and when he said I and the father is one the Jews stoned him wanted to stone him at least they understood perfectly well that he made claim to be God with these words just as he did with the words before Abraham was I am have you not heard this context before that is actually what I was referring to you see the Christian, to me, is reading out of context. What you have given me is the text. John chapter 10, verse 30. That is the text. Now, context means, please, don't waste time. Context means the text that goes with it, before or after. And I have been asking learned Christians, what is the context? English-speaking people, what is the context? And nobody seems to understand that simple English of mine. I said, what you quoted is the text. I want the text that goes with it. So they want to open the book. I said, no, 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 please, keep the book shut. If you know your what you are talking about, then you ought to know what the context is. What is the context? Yes. Do you know, sir? Look, I don't want to embarrass you, because I know people get embarrassed. I said, what is the context, the, the text that goes with it? Without opening the book as a pastor, sir, you might remember in what sense did he say that? In the sense that he was gradually revealing himself this was so, what 
was so hard to understand. Some people they accepted, some rejected and got angry because they understood. And nobody can say, I and the Father is one, without being either a fool or be true. true. You see, sir, what you are doing now, you are giving an explanation. What I was asking for is the context. Let Before me what I, the I, same. I mean. Context, starting on verse 23, what you quoted was 30. Let's start from 23. There's a context. It reads, and Jesus, if you like to open the book, if you like to have a look at it, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch. John 10, 23. And Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem. He's walking. He's alone. Jesus, not with his disciples. He's alone. Then came the Jews round about him, meaning they surrounded him. Because this man Jesus, a mighty messenger of God, he was provoked by the Jews and he, he, he criticized them very, very strongly. He says, you generation of wipers, you white sepulchers, you fools, you wicked and adulterous generation, you brood of snakes. And the Jews were not the people to forgive you for that. We you know that they are unforgiving people. So now they have their own time. They have an opportunity. They have an opportunity that here is a man, he's alone, let's give him a good bashing. You know, he's been calling his name. So they surround him and they say, how long does that make us to doubt? If that be the Christ, tell us plainly. Am I right, sir? Huh? How long? That means they're brandishing a finger in, the, in his face. He say, how long are you going to make us to doubt? If you are a Christ, tell us plainly, man. In other words, you are talking ambiguously. You are not putting forth your claim clear enough. That's the allegation, the charge. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. It's a lie. You are uttering a lie against me that I didn't tell you. I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they be witness of me. And my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My verse 28. That's my true. Father which gave them me is greater than, than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 29, verse 30, I and my father are one. That is the context. Meaning that once a person has accepted faith, God sees to it that he remains in faith, and I as a teacher, as a master, I see to it that they remain in faith. We are both one in this to see that the man remains in faith. Not in omnipotence, not in omniscience, that he is a... No, we are one in this to see that the man remains in faith. But the Jews were looking for trouble. Look, they were out for a fight. And there's a saying that if you're looking for trouble, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. Am I right, sir? You're looking for trouble, and before that, you can say twinkling on your eye, you are in it. If you're looking for trouble. So the Jews were looking for trouble. So they picked up stones again to stone him. Verse 31. So Jesus says, Many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of those works will you stone me? So they say, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, because that thou being a man makest thyself a God. That's the context. Yes. What does Jesus say to that? You see, the first false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Correct? That he was not putting forth his claim clear enough. He said, you're talking ambiguously. Come on, man, tell us. If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. It means you're not doing it plainly. That's the first false charge. Second charge, you are now blaspheming. You are claiming to be God when you are a man. What is the answer? He says, he says, he says look, if I'm God, I say, I'm God. You say, you must have did that get the lecturer. I say, yes. Why should I be very good? Why must I beat around the bush? You did that? I said, yes. You are a lecturer of Islam? I said, yes. Why should I start beating around the bush? If I am. So, he says, they say, you are blaspheming. What does Jesus say to that? He says, is it not written in your law? In the Torah. Law, the word law. The law in English, in Hebrew is Torah. 
Is it not written in your law? In your law is sarcastic. It's also his law. Because he said, Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am come not to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. It's also his law. But he says, Your law is sarcastic. In other words, you ought to know in your book. Like somebody said, look it in your Bible, sir. You know, that means in your, in your Bible. Maybe it's also my Bible. But it's your Bible. Have a look. So is it not written in your law? And he quotes from the 82nd Psalm. I said, ye are gods. It's a quotation. I said, ye are gods. He's quoting from the 82nd Psalm, where God speaks to the Jews. He says, behold, ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the quotation. In other words, he's quoting from the 82nd Psalm that this is our language, man. We talk like that. The Englishman is talking about the magistrate, the judge. He says, me Lord, me Lord, me Lord, means my Lord, my Lord, my, he says, my God, my God. When he says me Lord, what does he mean? He means, you know, respectable sir, respectable sir. But he's calling Lord, my Lord, my Lord. He's not his God, he's not his God. That is your language. In Afrikaans, in Afrikaans, I don't know how close it is to your Danish language, the, the white man's language. They say in Afrikaans, I'm quoting from the book of Isaiah, he says, Ek, Ek is the hearer. And that is, Hain, 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 many. I, I am God. The word there is H E R E, hearer. Hearer means God. Lord. But it means God in, in the Afrikaans language. Hearer. H E R E, hearer. I don't know whether you have something like that in your language. Hearer. I, I am God, and there is no savior besides me. But in Afrikaans, the word is hearer, God, I am God. This word is also hot, means God, and hearer means Lord, meaning God. So, now in, in, in South Africa, I don't know Afrikaans as a language, but I go to one of our cities, you look at me, brother, 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 brother. I go one of two of our cities, where this Afrikaans is the predominant language, and I go to the toilet, and it's written there, Dama, D-A-M-E, they, they pronounce Dama and H-E-R-E. -E. To me, Dama, here. I said, Dama means ladies, here. But this door here, there's another door there. He said, no, 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 no. <laughs> this here is not here, it's here. You pronounce here means, means gentleman. But in the Bible, here means God. I said, you got toilets for gods in South Africa? <laughs> No, this is the genius of the language. Genius of the language. So Jesus is reminding them, is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came in the prophets, are called gods. In the book of Exodus, God speaks to Moses. He says, behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh. Am I quoting correctly, sir? I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Is he God? Is Moses God? But that's what's written there in your Bible, sir. So in other words, this is the genius of our language. We talk like that, but we don't mean that. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he calls them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. The scripture cannot be broken. You can't contradict what I'm telling you. That's what Jesus told the Jews. You can't contradict me, what I'm telling you. Say ye of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest, because I said I'm the Son of God. In other words, it means nothing, man. Look, if a man is called God, you take no exception to that. Why are you taking exception to me when I say I'm the Son of God? That is what he's telling. Because God has got sons by the tons. By the tons in the Bible. He's got sons by the tons. So this is how he's reasoning. He's, if he was God, he said, look, I am God, so what else can I say? But he said, nothing of the kind. In the context, it is not what you understand. That is why he said, come, let us reason together. You don't have to accept my explanation. But I said, now, let, give me a hearing. Whatever you have to say, I said, now, I will explain. Okay, brother. <laughs> Thank you.
Guys, this was really nice. I may did, did I did that explain this very clearly. Like he was reading the scripture like something he grew up reading. Like I'm impressed how knowledgeable he knows about the scripture. It's very very nice with him. But I would like to so check out the scripture. John 10 verse 30 to 38. We were talking about the context. So either you are starting from the John 1 to this or John 10 verse 1 to 30 or you are continuing from 30 to 38 from beginning to the end or from where you start to the end. So let's read it. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For which of these do you stone me? Verse 33, we are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, because you, a man, man, claim to be God. This was what Ahmed did that, did that said. So, verse 34, Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? When he was referring it, yeah. I have said you are gods. According to the psalm, he picked out psalm, uh, um, what verse again in the psalm? I think he picked out a verse in the psalm. And he was Psalm 82. So he was referring it. I have said you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the, the word of God came. And the scripture cannot be set aside. That is true. If this word of God is set aside, it means every word the word have been said has been wrong. So the word of God can never be set aside. So what about the one whom the father set apart? Verse 36. Jesus himself said, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Jesus himself was making it very clear here. Um, Ahmed did that, did not emphasize on it. He didn't even pick out this part out while he was explaining it. Verse 36, read it if you, uh, you have your Bible there. What Jesus himself said, what about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world he was referring to him his own self jesus christ why then do you accuse me of blasphemy because i said i am god's son you see that verse 36 itself jesus emphasized when if he called the if he called them gods to whom the word of god came and the scripture cannot be set aside jesus was emphasizing jesus was describing it it, your own word, your own Bible, or your own Quran, according to what he said, it is been set apart like you guys are called gods in some scriptures. So Jesus was now referring to him his own self. What about the one whom the Father set apart as his very own and sent into the world? Jesus was not referring to himself as man. You know, if you read the scripture itself, you know he was not describing him his own self as man calling himself God. Or what was written in Psalm 82. He was not referring himself like that. And Ahmed did that, did not make emphasis to this part. So, um, that was why Jesus was saying, I am a father, I want. It's, it's very, very open here. Because he didn't actually point out the scripture itself. Why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said I am God's son. Verse 37. Do not believe me unless I do the works of my father. Verse 38. But if I do them, even though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the father is in me and I in the father. It's, only, it's, it's very, very clear in my scripture. Like when Amadi did that was... Explain. I wanted to pick. I picked up my phone. I wanted to like read out the scripture, but I wanted the video itself to come to an end. Then I make emphasis on the scriptures. He he read. I mean, did that read from verbs thirty to thirty five. He did not continue from what about the one whom the father set apart to the end. You see, it's very clear that you can pick copy of scripture, the Bible, and read it for yourself. Hey, hey, I mean, that knows about the scripture clearly. He, he even knows about the scripture more than me who is a Christian. Truly, I accept that. But 
himself, he's trying to, I know the pastor over there did not try to accept everything he said. He's trying to point out the scripture, the point like, Jesus was never referring to himself as God. That is what he's trying to tell the entire world. But that is not what the scripture itself is saying. Um, we can argue about this day and night continuously, but Jesus himself, he's not human. He came as a human, but he's together with God. He always acknowledged man to worship God. He's not saying himself, how should I put it? Himself is overall God. Is over, he is the son of God. People are always like, if he's a son, then they have to be a woman. The things of the spiritual is not the same of the physical. You see, we humans, we always try to use our moral way of thinking to classify how God Almighty ought to be. That is not how it's supposed to be. In the beginning, God created Adam. When he noticed Adam was lonely, he was like, he needed to create a companion. He picked out from the ribs of a man, from Adam, to make Eve. So when they are saying, um, Jesus is the son, then they have to be a woman. You don't clarify the things of spiritual to the things of physical. There's large, there's difference. So I don't like when um, people come about and try to use a more or normal knowledge to um, clarify the sense of the spiritual. It's it's way more deeper than that. And I don't know why Amadida did not emphasize on verse 36 to verse 39. Verse 4 says, verse 36 to verse 38. He didn't actually clarify those verses and he didn't say anything about them. He, he was speaking out as a knowledgeable man. But he didn't make emphasis to the main points himself. Is it, the scripture itself, for Christians to come about and tell you this, we are not stupid. It's the way you guys come about and start telling us like, um, Muhammad is real. Um, you guys are deliberating and arguing about the Holy Spirit. Um, you guys have your own thoughts. But what is written in the scripture itself, it's there. This was written before I was born. So, I made that coming about to make emphasis on his own word, on his own word. People have been feeling like human itself. We Christians were worshiping Jesus. Jesus and God, He is the Son of God. They have that bond. We have one God. That is what you guys always be like. Why are you worshiping man? We have one God, Jehovah Jireh, who is the Holy Most High. You guys call him Allah. We call it God. Okay, it's the same word because it's a different translation. So, but Jesus being the Son of God, you guys don't accept that. Me, I truly accept that because it is written plainly in the scripture. Amadi that made his own point, but <laughs> it was not clear enough for me. Guys, verse that says he didn't pick out, I don't know why he didn't pick out that scripture out because it was plainly written there. He's talking about the contest. The contest he didn't read it till the end. So I know a lot of people are going to argue and deliberate a lot, but my own opinion is stand. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. And T, you guys say I'm blind. It's your own opinion. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe I'm serving a living God. I believe in Jesus Christ. He came to die for our sins. And as many that will argue with me of that, it's your own opinion. Everyone has their own point of view. And this, vi this video itself, I'm ready that is always trying to like pick out like Christians ourselves. We don't know what we are worshiping, we don't know what we are doing. Um, it's his own opinion, it's his own thoughts. Um, I don't know how, I don't want to argue about this. So comment down below what you think about this video. Give us a thumbs up. Share this with as many as you can. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking. I don't own papers. Pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging. I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitches in my bed. I got scales all